What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. And with this video, we are jumping into Devil's Reign Superior 4 issue number 1. Now, if you haven't been keeping up with Daredevil, if you haven't been keeping up with Devil's Reign, go ahead, check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It is going to get you completely caught up on everything that has led us to this point. But what we have seen so far is Wilson Fisk, the mayor of New York City, he has implemented a new law with Kingpin banning any superhero, anybody wearing a mask is going down. Implementing his new Thunderbolt Force, they have been tasked with taking down every single vigilante, every single masked individual that is still making their way through this city. And with that, the Fantastic Four, we see Sue Storm and Reed Richards both getting arrested. And with them no longer around, the Baxter Building is now open and Dr. Octavius is going to take full advantage of that. Be sure to buy the comic, support the industry, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. All right, gang, so as we dive into this issue, what we are seeing is Doc Ock really taking over the Fantastic Four lab, now having access to every single one of Reed Richards' toys, experiments, anything you can imagine that is in the Fantastic Four lab is now Doc Ock's. And so since Mayor Fisk had already unearthed everyone's secrets, the Fantastic Four are gone and his tenure at this building has now begun. And his first act was to summon three other auto variants, other Octaviuses from across the multiverse. And those three are made up of Otto Banner, a Hulk variant from Earth 8816. You have Otto Blaze, a Ghost Rider variant from Earth 1666. And then Otto Howlett from Earth 9712, our Wolverine variant. And at this point, the other autos, they're not really sure why they have been summoned to 616. But he lets them know that they have every intention of contacting every single variant out there. They are going to scour the multiverse. And what he wants to create is a Council of Ox. And this will help them control everything. And at this point, all of the other autos, they seem to be on board with it, but they are highly skeptical. Because at the end of the day, they aren't Reed Richards. Not only that, you have to worry about paradoxes. But if they can find a way of, of mitigating all of these issues, they could very easily become Reed Richards. And though he knows they are doubting his plan right now, his plan of total conquest over the entire multiverse is about to unfold. But the question is, how often do you repeat throughout the multiverse? Are there even enough variants of you out there to create what you want to do? If you want total conquest, if you want to take everything over, there has to be a good amount of Doc Ox out there to be able to implement this. And Dr. Octavius lets everyone know that there is an infinite amount of Dr. Octaviuses saying that he is a fixed variant like Iron Man, like Spider-Man. Now, of course, all of the others, they're still very skeptical. Hulk goes to do some numbers, trying to crack it down, see if this is actually true and if it's something that they can do. But Dr. Octavius, he doesn't want to wait around. He opens up the bridge immediately and tells them it is now or never. And so they all agree. Curiosity really getting the better of all of them, them needing to find out what he's trying to do, what he really wants to accomplish. And so going through the portal, we arrive at the gutted gulch. This is Earth 5069. And as they arrive here, they go looking for any trace of an auto variant. But as they look around, this planet looks like it's gone into full extinction. Something has happened here where it has wiped all life from the surface of this planet. Believing this planet to be completely barren. That is, until we see the arrival of the Iron Scab. Letting them know that they need to get back into their portal. And they need to leave this universe. Our Superior Four not willing to do that, 
we see the fight break out. And though Iron Scab, he tries with everything he can to take these guys down. At the end of the day, he is no match for the Superior Four. And with him pinned down, Dr. Octavius is trying to get him to say his name. Saying that you have to know who I am. If you know who Wolverine, Hulk, and everyone else is, then you should know who I am. But the truth of the matter is the Iron Scab has no idea who Dr. Octavius is. Dr. Octavius not sure how to take this, believing himself to be a fixed variant in the multiverse. That there has to be a version of him somewhere on this planet at some point in time. But he begins to lose power to his arms. And with this loss of power, he is done here. With Ghost Rider turning Iron Scab into a flame, they make their exit. They head back to Earth 616. And with Otto Hulk now re-establishing the connection between his arms and his brain, Ghost Rider lets us know that there has some kind of magical sigil that was going on. Dr. Octavia is saying that he doesn't believe in this in the slightest bit, that he doesn't believe in magic. But Blaze knows what it's like to do a devil's bargain, letting him know the Mephisto always wins. And we know that Dr. Octavius, he made a deal with the devil, and he is missing part of his memory because of this. And this absence has led to him developing some type of inferiority complex. And now with him having complete control of his arms again, everyone going ahead and taking a nap for a little bit. While everyone slept, Dr. Octavius, he created bridges to every single variant that was out there. And he came to one conclusion. The failed state of their supremacy, it can be corrected. Because right now they are in a superposition. Their reign in both certain and complete failure at the same time. They cannot conceive what comes next until they clash. To measure the multiverse, they have to clash with themselves. They are going to wage war on themselves. Entangle within the wave function of their collective existence. And due to the conservation of momentum, with one strike, their fates will be intertwined with every auto variant in the multiverse. This will send a destructive wave through the multiverse, where they will, by definition, don't know what happens next. And so if they can make this act of cosmic transgression, the implications, they could be vast. Be it a person, a tree, a squirrel, all life goes somewhere when it dies, and the multiverse branches. And so while this is extremely risky, one singular death, it could very well cause a dozen different branches. This would create new Octaviuses all over the multiverse, or it might simply consolidate their power. Either way, they are gaining insight to their multiversal existence. And Dr. Octavius has already done the math. He spent hours piloting the bridge, and there are 3,409 different variants of Otto. And there is only one Otto out there in all of those realities that knows the kind of power needed to defeat them. And so with them opening up the portal, they are headed to the first variant. And the first Earth they go to is Earth 2902, the Fresh Fraun City. And as they arrive in this jungle city, they quickly get the scent of the other auto, of the other variant that is out there. The Superior Four making their way through the city. They turn a corner to find the individual they are looking for. This is Superior Spider-Man. And he lets them know, I smelled you guys as soon as you came through that portal. And he lets them know, I know exactly why you are here. This is actually something that I have seen coming for quite a few years now. And we see TJ, he starts wrecking these guys. Starts taking on all of the Superior Four, one at a time, until he goes against Wolverine. With the adamantium legs, they cut right through TJ's legs. With him getting thrown off his balance, Dr. Octavius uses his arms and throws him into a wall. And now with Superior Spider-Man down on the ground, they all start to jump him. And with him bloody, bruised, and beaten, he tries to let them know, don't let your anger, don't let your hatred control everything that you do. Because every single one of you are tormented by the ghosts of the past. 
But if you look at me, someone who had his father die, liberated from abuse, celebrated a young age, and became amazing, and he lets Dr. Octavius know that you, of every single variant out there, you could be the best of us. If you would let go of your hate, if you would let go of your anger, if you would stop trying to take total conquest into the equation, you could be the best variant that has ever existed. But Dr. Octavius, he has already gone down a path he can't come back from. Or at least this is what he believes. And what he is about to do next will only solidify that harder. Because he didn't come here to merely kill him. He came here to take everything from him. To take his power. To take his memories. To take everything that is TJ and absorb it into him. Putting this device on his forehead, that is exactly what we see happen. And just like that, we have the death of Superior Spider-Man. And so with one down, and several thousand to go, they head off to the next world. Now little do they know, that there is a Dr. Octavius variant out there. The one from Earth 7214. And this one is probably the most powerful of all the Dr. Octaviuses. He is the one individual that will be able to challenge any kind of council that forms, that will be able to challenge the superior four. And he is able to detect that one of them have died, one of the variants have gone silent, and the one responsible is Dr. Octavius from 616, now saying that it is finally time to act. And though he is still completely blind to his existence, Dr. Octavius of 616, he doesn't even know that this war being waged, this invisible war that is happening, Dr. Octavius of 616 is nowhere near as superior as Supreme Octavius. Because Supreme Octavius is Dr. Doom, Dr. Strange, and Dr. Octavius all in one variant. And Dr. Octavius of 616, he doesn't know it yet, but this will be his- Alright gang, so as we dive into issue number two, we are picking up with the Supreme Octopus. The man who is Dr. Strange, Dr. Doom, Dr. Octavius, all in one person. On this planet, in this universe, he is the Supreme. And what he is doing right now is looking at all of the variants in the different universes that are himself. And what he sees is that they are not a key figure in almost all timelines. In fact, Dr. Octavius usually dies in some horrific or gruesome way. The statistical constant of his existence, it is failure. But our Supreme Octopus, he gets no joy from looking at all of these variants losing their lives. He does this so he can understand what is about to come. Because Supreme Octopus, out of all of the variants that exist, this is the anomaly. Supreme Octopus is the anomaly. And he has been tasked to keep himself and all of his variants in line. And right now, his eye is on 616. As Doc Ock from Earth 616 is in the bridge, as he scans the multiverse looking for other variants that he could take out and take their knowledge, this is when he runs in to the Supreme Octopus. And he is letting Doc Ock know that it is time for him to stop, that this will be his first and final warning, and that when the dust settles, Supreme Octopus will still be standing, and Doc Ock, he will either be exiled or he will be dead. But in the midst of this conversation, he is interrupted with Banner ripping off the headset. Because right now, all of the other auto variants, they are not happy. With them believing that maybe the Doc Ock of 616, he has just gone too far. At one point in time, he worried about preserving the timeline. But now that he has this hunger for knowledge, there seems to be nothing that he won't do, no matter the consequences. But what starts off looking like an intervention, it turns more into a mutiny. Though Banner, Blaze, and Howlett have no intention of really turning this violent, Dr. Octopus doesn't give them any chance with him believing that they are all beneath him, believing himself to be the most intelligent and brilliant in the room. We see the fight kick off, 
and really are variants, they're trying to calm him down. Because at the end of the day, they don't want violence. They don't want to kill one another. They just want him to see reason. He has created a paradox, and they really don't know what kind of effect that is going to have on the timeline. Not only that, he wants to continue this. Not knowing the ramifications of their actions, they just want to pause for a second. With Dr. Octopus unwilling to do this, with the battle continuing to ensue, we see the portal open up. The portal that gives them access to the multiverse. And we see all of our autos, they get sucked into the portal. Landing on Earth 7214, this place is a desolate wasteland. Recognizing that there has been some kind of mass extinction event that had transpired here. They're trying to figure out what is going on. With Doc Ock from 616 letting them know he believes that they were sent here. But none of the other autos, they, they don't want to hear this. Because he's been babbling on about talking to some kind of supreme being that is out there. When the reality is, they believe that he is responsible because of his antics back in the laboratory. And with all of our autos furious getting ready to gut Doc Ock, we see a giant tidal wave. It comes flooding in and it crashes over all of them. With Dr. Octopus from 616, a portal opening up underneath his feet and him falling through. And that is what brings us to the savage lands of Earth 6968. Because Supreme Octopus is responsible for bringing them to this location. And though Doc Ock, he tries to do a little bit of chest beating, Supreme Octopus lets him know that you just need to stop. No matter how intelligent, no matter how strong, or how powerful you believe yourself to be, I am the Supreme Octopus. I am your superior, and you will bow to me in my presence. And no matter how much you would like to fight it, this is the inevitable outcome. The things you have done, the course that you have taken, has brought you right before me. And with Doc Ock trying to put on a good display, Supreme Octopus, he doesn't care. Because the reality is, he is the one who burned Null to ashes. Dormammu had bowed at his feet. He pulled him from another universe with a flick of his wrist. But the truth is, Supreme Octopus, he is not here to kill him. And that if he truly wants to fight, they can do that. He can tell that his ego is going to drive him. Though he warns him, he should think logically. Because Supreme, he knows how this ends. The other autos, they don't save him. Because while they may not say it, they crave the knowledge that he has. With Dr. Octavius from 616 and all of the variants that he has gathered together, they form up and they get ready to take down Supreme Octopus. With him giving them one last warning, saying that if they bow now at his feet, he will give them all of the knowledge that they may seek. But they rather resort to violence. And with the fight getting on the way, they think they have the upper hand because they have the numbers. But the truth is, this fight was over as soon as it began. With Supreme Octopus taking on all of our variants one by one. All of the variants, they're bringing their A-game. But they are no comparison to the might and strength of Supreme Octopus. With all of the variants on the ground, attending to their bruises and their wounds, they quickly recognize the magic that he is using, with this being the same magic that they encountered on Earth 5069. The same magic that caused Otto's arms to fail. The magic that he is currently using to hold Doc Ock from 616 down. This is where they learn he can cast interdimensional magic. With each of our autos bending the knee to Supreme Octopus, this fight has come to its end. But Dr. Octavius from 616, with him being held down by this magic, he has lost all connection to his extra arms. And because of that, they have to amputate them. With each of the variants grabbing a hold of one of the arms, we see Dr. Octavius stripped of all of his arms. And with his most prized possession being stolen and ripped away from him, we pick up at the Supreme Sanctorum. This is where Dr. Octavius from 616 is being held prisoner for his actions against the multiverse. For not heeding the warning of Supreme Octopus, 
he has been imprisoned with no sign of getting loose. But in his solitude, he vows that he will break himself free and he will prove himself to be the superior. Alright gang, so as we dive into this last issue, we are picking up with a drop of blood being dropped into the dirt. And usually this would mean absolutely nothing. It would mean that you bled on the ground and it's over with. The only exception, Dr. Octavius, he used this drop of blood like a seed. And what we see created from it is the inferior Octavius. With this inferior being making its way throughout the multiverse, it is searching for something. It is searching for some kind of help, trying to find the consciousness of Dr. Octavius. And that is what brings it to the Supreme Sectorium. It found its way here because this is where Dr. Octavius is. After the Supreme Octopus had ripped off his arms, he imprisoned him. With this inferior being coming and rescuing him, breaking him free of his shackles, Dr. Octavius doesn't know what to think about this thing, recognizing that it looks a lot like Man-Thing. But at the same time, it listens and hears and reacts to the name Otto Octavius. Octavius. This is where Doc Ock finally realizes that this is in fact him. This is the variant of Otto Octavius. And under normal circumstances, Dr. Octavius, he would honestly never mess with something that is so inferior to his own. But right now, he needs to strike a bargain. He needs to find a way to take down Supreme Octopus. And that takes us to the study of the Supreme. With the other three variants in his office, he is explaining to them that he needs them for what comes next. Shredding himself of his armor, trying to show that he is not a threat to them, that he has no intention of hurting them. In fact, he actually wants their help. And that is because all of their meddling has led to their lives all being entangled. And so if one of them are killed, it could possibly change all of them. Doing a proper introduction, he introduces himself as Otto Warren Von Strange. And he is the last remaining variant from a long and tireless war. And since that war has ended, he has maintained balance with inside their multiversal existence. But this position, it requires an heir, or heir. And the first time I read through this, I immediately thought of the TV show Loki. This is almost identical to what Kane the Conqueror had offered Loki and his variants. So in that terms, it's a little bit disappointing that this is just rehashing a literal TV show that was on not even that long ago. But as he walks through the facility, showing them everything to offer, letting them know that they have all done this before. Another Otto once razzed through the entirety of the multiverse, killing millions, siphoning minds, swapping bodies, the usual when it comes to Otto. But the Supreme Octopus, he is the one that put a stop to him. Not necessarily killing him, but stopping him, and now having an army of his own Octaviuses. He did this through technology. Through technology and magic. He used the technology to defraud the Octavius that came to his world and tried enslaving everybody. And magic, he used magic to take everything else. And now this earth is prospering. He eradicated all disease. He ended global conflicts, provided universal education, and abolished world hunger. He has truly built what he calls a paradise. Meanwhile, inside the cells, we have the Man-Thing and Dr. Octavius. And Dr. Octavius wants to strike a deal. With him no longer having his robotic arms, he needs a little bit extra help. Asking the Man-Thing variant, will you help me? Will you help me kill the Supreme? And the Man-Thing, it doesn't speak, so it can't give him a direct answer. What it does do is it goes over to him, it climbs onto him, and it attaches himself to where his arms would be in the first place. Man-Thing attaches himself and makes him the arms of Dr. Octavius. And so with them bonded together, the Man-Thing variant, he wants something in return. Dr. Octavius swearing that whatever he wants, he will have after the Supreme has been taken out. And picking up with our other variants and the Supreme, he is letting them know that after the war, he began holding the delicate position of non-interference. And he is now come to believe that this new cycle, all of this 
craziness that is now happening is because he did not interfere anymore. But he wants these variants all to stay here. He wants their help in keeping all of the Octaviuses in all of existence in check. Because this is something that Dr. Octavius, in any form, in any variant, will always try to accomplish. They will always try to get into the multiverse. They will always try to take things over. Our Supreme wants to let them know that he is saving them from themselves. That once they are able to see the multiverse, once they see everything that he has to show them, they will truly understand why this is a necessity. For example, Earth 7214, the outcome from meddling manifestations. Otto Octavius is born an Atlantean, fated to create a bioweapon that eradicates water from the multiverse. Because of this, the Supreme, he sunk Atlantis on this Earth. But he also lets the three variants know that each of you on your own Earth, you will cause some kind of destruction. Letting the Hulk variant know that while he may be able to take care of the radiation bomb, the radiation bomb he will create to get his humanity back. But in doing so, he will kill millions. He lets Ghost Rider know that while you sit here and say you are vengeance, you call yourself the superior Ghost Rider. You still fail to enact vengeance on a societal scale. The world is literally falling apart and you do nothing to stop it. And then when it comes to Wolverine, he will just simply kill everybody. Using the Crimson Bands, he lets all of the variants know that what you guys have done, what you will do, it is too much and you need to be reset. He wants all of the variants to turn to their original form and what seemed like a job offer has quickly turned into a full-on lobotomy of all three variants. With them wrapped up in the Crimson Bands, it looked like it might be too late for them until we have the arrival of Otto Octavius and his Man-Thing arm. Recognizing that Otto was able to escape, the Supreme lets him know that if you will simply stop all of this meddling, I will remake you into the Superior Spider-Man. Letting him know that it was him. Him whispering in his ear, luring him to erase his greatest accomplishment. It was Supreme who taught him how to summon Mephisto. And so the spider sense, the suit, the glory, he lets him know that he can give it all back to him. But Otto has not come here to strike a bargain. He has come here with one thing in mind and that is to take out the Supreme. And Otto isn't looking for magic. He's not looking for sorcery. Mixing his blood with the soil of the gutted gulch in Earth 5069, that is exactly how this Man-Thing variant was created. This was his multiversal contingency plan. With the Supreme recognizing that this is going to be a fight, we see his armor come flying in. Floating behind him, he tells his armor to compress around him. With his pseudo-armor now on, this is where the real fight begins. With Supreme having Octavius completely wrapped up, we see the whole and the other variants, they are able to break out of the bands. And in doing so, they catch the Supreme off guard. Ghost Rider using Hellfire to weaken the armor of Supreme. We see the Hulk punch him, trying to smash through the armor and weaken it even more. Wolverine makes his attack and Dr. Octavius, he goes in for the killing blow with one of Man-Thing's arms piercing the skull of Supreme Octopus. Though he appears to still be alive. He is completely taken out of the fight. And I really think they're going on the idea that Supreme Octopus, his hubris was so big, his ego was so large, that he didn't see it coming. Using Man-Thing, which isn't technology or anything of that nature, which Supreme Octopus appeared to believe that that's what Doc Ock was using, it's kind of weird they, they kind of really just jumped into that. But we'll dive more into that at the end of the issue. With Supreme Octopus now on the ground, they have to ask what to do now. Now we have no way of opening up a portal. We have no way of getting back to our Earth. With Doc Ock introducing all of the variants to the new variant, the Man-Thing Ock. Man-Thing going over to the Supreme, attaching himself to him, using whatever bit of magic is remaining inside of him currently, we see him open up a portal. This portal is taking them all back to the Baxter building. Dr. Octavius, he goes to build some new arms while all of the variants, they fix the teleporter. And per Dr. Octavius' agreement,
Island with the Man Thing variant. It is now time for him to hold up his end of the bargain. With the teleporter now fixed, they walk into it and he brings him to some kind of location. He doesn't disclose this location to any of the other variants, saying that it is better none of them know where this guy is. Returning the Man Thing variant, he comes back through the portal, knowing that one day Supreme may be able to recover and come back for revenge. Recognizing that there is no more room for error, it is time for him to think bigger. And so he makes a proposal to the other variants, wanting their help of ridding New York City of all the crime. He wants to prove that the Superior Four are better than any of the wretched heroes who police this world. And the four of them united, they will serve as judge, jury, and executioner. And with their help, Dr. Octavius swears to each of them that he will help them in some way, help the Hulk de-evolve back into his normal self. Dr. Octavius willing to go with Ghost Rider down into hell, retrieve his soul, and find out what really happened to his mind. And Wolverine, this planet, this Earth, 616 has Krakoa. Him being immune, he will be able to go in there. And within a matter of weeks, they will wield untold international influence. So while the Superior Four, they head out to the streets and they get to work, we are taken to Fresh Front City. This is Earth 2902. We have the Man-Thing variant, but it's turned into something else. It is turned into something new. That something new is Spider-Man. And as this Man-Thing Spider-Man begins to think to itself, thinking that maybe it was wrong to provoke the multiverse, that maybe it wasn't ready to be out here. Not sure if this radical change its destiny or not. It knows that it is not superior enough to cease the loop. And at least for the time being, it will only be making calculated risks. With the people seeing that Spider-Man has some kind of new look, that is where this story will end. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. To be honest, I, I was really expecting more from this finale. You have the potential of Victor Von Doom, Doctor Strange, and Doctor Octavius. Three variants in one person, and he's taken out by a vine. And I understand what they were going for, you know, his own hubris, his own ego. That is what caused him to eventually get taken out. But the truth is that it, it just didn't make sense. Like, these guys broke out of the crimson bands, but it doesn't necessarily specify how. They just did it. You know, they flexed their muscles and they broke out of it. You know, and it's just, it was a really quick way for them to get to the end of this story and take Supreme off the board. And while it looked like he may be dead, Dr. Octavius says that there's a chance he could recover and come back for him. So I like the fact that Supreme is still alive, he's still out there, and there's a good chance that we're gonna get story later on, who knows when. And it was also disappointing for us to essentially get the remake of Loki TV show from Disney+. Plus. Kane the Conqueror literally did this exact same thing, offered for the Lokis to take his place to rule and watch over all of time. Keep the Dr. Octavius's in all existences in check. Ensure that they do not come to the multiversal stage and try to take everything over. And so the fact that they literally reused that story in this is severely disappointing. With all of the possibilities and all of the avenues that you could have gone, you copied and pasted a TV show. As for the tie-in overall, I really did enjoy it if I take it as just a fun, kind of dumb event, I think that it can be a lot of fun. Me personally, I was just expecting more out of this. I was expecting for this to really land, and Marvel's had that problem lately with starting out stories absolutely amazing. And then those stories go right down the crapper by the time we get to the last issue. My only real good takeaway is that they hinted that Supreme is not dead, which means there's a good chance that in the future we could get an order origin story and maybe like a trials and tribulations of the supreme octopus but yeah let me know what you guys think down in the comments if you have not yet do me a favor hit that like button hit that notification bell make sure you're subscribed to the channel and if you really enjoy the content that we have coming out we do have the super like button you can donate a couple dollars to as much as you would like it goes to helping the channel out so on and so forth if you have a comic that you would like covered go ahead and do a super 
super like, let me know which comic that is, and I will absolutely get it covered for you. And so, until the next breakdown.